Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today we're going to be actually powder coating my rims, maybe my hubs. Uh, still not 100% sure on how I feel about it. Definitely going to be doing the rims though. Um, I have a few things that I've already done. So, but if you guys aren't subscribed to the channel first, hit the subscribe button and the alert bell. Then we can come on back, check out what we got going on. We've got something going on here. Oh, don't forget to smash the like button. I always appreciate that. It always helps with the YouTube algorithms and helping the channel grow. So, all right, let's get into it. All right, so the old bike stripped down. She doesn't have any rims on her. Um, I got the front and rear rim off. I got the tire dismounted. One thing I want to show you guys, which this could have been part of the problem. Not this seal. <laughs> See the rust? That's the good one. This is the front rim. I did not realize they were this bad. I mean, they're both dry and there's actually quite a bit of uh, radi uh, axial play. So when I move the rim this way, I grab it from the top and move it this way. You can hear it go and feel it like it's a little bit of a knock noise going back and forth. It wasn't moving, you know, you could barely, I mean, it was maybe moving. You, can't, you couldn't really even see it move. Um, you could just hear it and feel it. So I've heard of people having worse bearings than that in the front, but I think it was just a perfect storm, you know, uh, lesson learned for sure. So, all right, so I got those off. Next thing I'm gonna do, so I'm gonna start disassembling these rims. I gotta take the brake discs off um, of both. I gotta take the, the gear off of the rear one. Or the, and then uh, I gotta take the, this one already has the seals out and then I gotta heat them up, pop the, pop the, uh, the bearings out of both and then uh yeah i can start fully disassembling them i think this is just a collar but yeah these are these are way overdue and when i did i did clean these out and re-grease them but yeah they're just the seals are not good so yeah this is long overdue i got bearings coming for the front and then i have bearings for the rear already and seals so that's the progress all right so i got the rear rim unlaced i probably should have pulled the bearings i got a little ahead of myself first uh but yeah i'm glad i ordered new ones because there were a few that needed some gentle persuasion <laughs> um but yeah i did get uh, all of them off there were two that were actually different size but yeah these are Pretty grimy. I'm sure they're original, you know. I don't know if uh, the two, here's the two that were different size. They were like five millimeter instead of six millimeter for the head. Um, so I don't know if, I mean, obviously they got replaced. Um, so I'm going to pull all these out and I got to wait for this to come, this tool to come today. I mean, I could drill these out, probably hit it with a, um, like a screwdriver or something, get it worked out that way, but whatever, not a big deal at this point. Um, I got plenty of stuff to do, so I'm going to wait. And this bearing does seem pretty tight. It's smooth, but it's just like tight. I don't know what's up with that, but it seemed like the newer bikes, and I don't know if it's because a combination of the bearing, maybe the brakes or something, but it seemed like a couple of the guys that I was uh, kind of working on their bike with them at the track, um, just, oh, I think one of them I was helping with their, uh, lube their chain. And I spun, when I spun their back rim, it just seemed like it spun real easy. So, compared to mine at least. So I'm not sure what's up with that. But um, a few of these seem like they do have wear marks on them. Okay, so a couple of these have wear marks. I don't really think that's that big of a deal. 
I mean, I could always put these in here and replace them next year. Or like in a year or whatever. And that's obviously normal. But, uh, but yeah, some of these are pretty tight. But uh, they all seem like they're coming out fine. No problems. All the threads look good on them. Um, I did have to grab a couple when pulling the, or when unscrewing the nipple from them. But uh, nothing major. I don't think any of them are too odd looking. You know, as far as their shape or, you know, if they're bent or anything like that. They all look like they're in pretty decent shape. There's one right there. You can see this one's just a little dirty. Uh, but other than that, I mean, so far so good. Not too much of a problem taking these apart. Like I said, uh, I mean, this isn't my, this is only my second time delacing and rebuilding a set of rims. So I wanted to do some smaller rims to get that down first. And, you know, that way I could figure out my whole truing situation. There's the other one. Um, so hopefully everything will go fine. I'm not sure if any of these are supposed to be bent or not. Looks like I got a little bit. But these things are definitely dirty. I don't know if polishing these up will work. going to find out, that's for sure. If it doesn't work, I may very well just powder coat them. Just a light powder coat on them. Should be easy to do. But hopefully I can polish them up and then I'll... I think I'm just going to go with like a... Probably just go with black on the hubs. I thought about doing the candy red, but I don't know. It seems like that's everywhere. I don't like to be the same. Well, I like my stuff to stand out just to showcase, you know, my style, I guess you could say. So that's all them. And that's all these. These were the brake side. Four, five, six, yep. And these, so all the mainly straight ones are for the gear side. So I'm going to start popping these out and uh, start taking a look at everything. Okay, so at this point, what I did is I heated up, which I'm going to do a little more because it's been sitting. Just going to heat this hub up. And then uh, I've already got it to move a little bit. What I did was I ended up just taking a punch and I pushed the spacer in between the bearings on the inside of the hub there over a little bit and then I hit it from this side and was able to get a little bit of a gap and then that way I can put my bearing hammer slide hammer in there and it should pop out Got these from Harbor Freight. I'm not real impressed with them, but. Yeah, you can. That grease does not smell good in there, just heating it up that little bit. So the right tool for the right job, folks, really makes a huge difference. Unscrew the center portion. 
I mean, these could honestly probably be repacked, but I got new ones. Why even worry about it? I don't know why they would even keep the seals off like that. I mean, you could pull the seals off, repack them, you know, clean them out real good, repack them, but then you could put the seals back on. But they don't seem like they're terrible. These are Koyo, Japan. Uh, 6905RS is what those bearings are, if anybody needs them. I'm going to put these off to the side. I mean, that terrible bearings, they spin, you know, moderately smooth. Might be able to use them for a project, who knows. All right, so we're going to flip this over. Um, I can't remove this one yet, but probably drill out these two little divots. Two little punch marks. Okay, so once that tool comes in, I'll show you guys how that works. I mean, it's pretty simple. You just stick it on there, bop, 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 with a ooga dooga gun, and it comes right out. So we'll get this out of the way. First thing we got to do is take off this front rotor. There it is. And manual says you want to make sure that your rotor is not warped at all. This one looks pretty good. You can lay it on a flat surface or you can take a straight edge, put it across different angles and that'll tell you if you got any warpage. Or if you wanted to put a bigger rotor on, that's always a uh, good time to do it. You do have a drive direction, so just make sure you take note of that. I'm going to go ahead and put these nuts and bolts together. These should clean up pretty good in a soda blaster. If you guys don't have a dedicated soda blaster, I highly recommend it. This was the spacer on the inside of the rear axle. So there's one of these in there. Obviously, it's smaller. So I'm just going to try and pound that out of the way. That'll give me a lip to work off of. And then I'll be able to uh, at least get one of these moved a little bit to where I can get the slide hammer in there. See? There's a lip in there. So then I flip it over. Okay, so go ahead and heat this up a little bit. So now you can see it's up. Snug it up. Put your slide hammer on the end. Crusty. <laughs> yeah, that's a crusty old bearing there. You can hear it. You don't want to hear it. All right, let's get the other side now. The bad side, the real bad side. I think that Tusk makes a better bearing puller simply because of the fact 
that these are wedged and I had to grind down the smallest one to remove bearings from the rims that I ended up putting on that 03 CR85. I had to grind it down to where it was flat instead of tapered to where it was like a, a lip instead of being like tapered like that because it just wasn't grabbing and it looks like it even bent them a little bit I mean it was tearing up all that on the inside and everything and I put grease up in there and it helped look at that look at how loose that is wow that's pretty crazy There we go. Let me get these cleaned up. Could probably put them in the soda blaster and see what that does to it. So I got one of these. I don't know if I should replace these or not, but this is from the rear. Uh, let's see if we can clean these up at all. Look like they're clean enough. These are stainless steel, so. Not too bad. So here's the rear rim. They get pretty gummed up. This is after washing it too. So that's the last time this thing will ever be shiny chrome or shiny aluminum. Going into the blasting cabinet. Okay, so this was really tight. I finally got it to where um, I will be able to fit this in here in the oven, this 21 inch rim. Um, it's pretty tight right here, and um, it's tight on the sides and tight at the bottom. But this is a, a pretty stable setup. 
And I had to put this on the very top and I have to, when I put it in, I have to lift the back of it up to where it goes up and over the bulb glass and it'll fit. So yeah, I'm going to get ready to spray it right now. And then I'm going to go ahead and pop it in the oven and uh, hope for the best. So, all right, I will be back. Currently, I've been polishing up these uh, spokes here, and all I'm doing is just uh, using some of this um, scouring pad, and it's been cleaning them up pretty good. So, I think uh, I think that'll look just fine. Big difference. Pretty grimy. So um, I got those cleaning up. I got the rear spoke nipples, and then I got the tusk uh, bearing retainer mover, remover tool, socket, whatever you want to call it. So I'm going to go ahead and heat that up. I started cleaning up some of the back spokes, and that's what they used to look like. So they're cleaning up pretty good. I mean, they're not perfect, but... Hey, that'll look a heck of a lot better than it did. All right, let's get some heat on this thing. Let's see if we can break her loose. Let's use an impact. like that all right so the next thing we're gonna do is pop this uh, bearing out So I'm going to go ahead and clean this up once it cools down, and then I'm going to put it in the sandblaster. Clean it up, tape it off, and we'll spray it. Alright, last one of the front spokes. And then I was doing all the threads, but I'm just going to use a wire wheel on the threads of each one of them. So it was having a, I was having a hard time putting the this fat end inside the drill. It was making it wobble all over the place. So that's that. Quite a difference. Okay, so these are the nipples off of the front rim. And I ended up putting them in this soda blaster and uh, got these all polished up. And what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to pop these, uh, just one on here, and then I'm going to hit it with some uh, 
polish, see if I can clean them up a little bit. So that doesn't really, I mean, it's doing a little bit, but might not be enough to even worry about. Any day I'm gonna hit these the wire with.